Hello everybody and welcome back to the collection review series. This is episode number 22. I'm the host A7X fan Ben and now we're into the unique treasures. You might notice this is a new binder and I haven't gone over it before. So I've completed all the ships and crew review collection review series videos for the factions. I did the mega card tin last time and now I'm just into the miscellaneous binder. So this one, this binder has UTs, the subject of this episode as well as forts and equipment and some random stuff at the end. Just random little collectible stuff and rules and checklists. So this is pretty much the random miscellaneous binder, but also the UT binder because that that's what takes up the bulk of the space in it. So this newest page is actually just UTs that I haven't integrated into the rest of the UTs, which are organized by set, of course. So I'm just going to do the more recent acquisitions to my collection first. So... I'm gonna go over them pretty quick because a lot of these I don't have a lot of experience with or they're just, I don't know, they're kind of just basic or I don't know. So scurvy, this one can eliminate crew, but uh, you remove it when the ship docks at your home island. So this one's not likely to be too effective against most gold runners because you're not gonna carry much crew. Um, and you still have to roll a four to six to eliminate a crew. So not too big a deal. You just would wanna avoid it with a hybrid with lots of crew aboard. Ghostly Encounter, not a big deal either. So you eliminate crew on a one, and then it's worth gold equal to crew remaining on the ship after all dice are rolled. So it's usually not gonna be worth much because gold runners will find it and they don't have much crew aboard. So not a big one either. This is the LE version of dry powder, which is why you see the silver coins, but we'll see dry powder again in a second with Crimson Coast. This one basically gives the ability to ignore, move, uh, ignore terrain when given move action. So that's that three point ability. It's really only worth one or two points. But it could be pretty useful for gold runners. I could see this being useful on one masters to go over Sargasso Seas without getting trapped, for example. Livestock is just stupid. Uh, it's like an anti sea monster defense, but it's really weak and it's really a really awful UT, honestly. I think Wolf did a pretty scathing review of it. Uh, Chariot of the Gods is actually really interesting. I haven't really gotten this one to work. Um, sorry about the quality. Maybe I can try to zoom in or out here. Place this treasure on the nearest sea monster, it may be, now be assigned one crew per the transfer rules. So, that's really interesting. I haven't really seen this one come into play. I haven't used it hardly at all, especially because I just got it not too long ago. But this one could be crazy to put a captain or like an all powerful crew or, or even an eternal or something on a sea creature. So, or a sea monster, I should say. So, that one is actually really interesting and somewhat powerful. Jade, I actually wrote a review about. So this is basically like smuggled goods where you can double the value, gold value of a treasure. Uh, but this one actually stays on the ship, so it takes up cargo. But so this is a good one to use if you've got a ship with low cargo, and then you could double like a six or a seven coin, and then try to get lots of high value coins. It's kind of like a unique treasure variant of the gold factory idea, where you unload treasure one by one at your home island to get big bonuses on the, each coin. The curse gets fear, but then it affects your ships. So, I just found this one in one of the Vassal campaign games, so we'll see how that goes. Could be kind of interesting, because you want to avoid your own ships with it, so you don't get hit with fear. Uh, shipping charts, look at one face down cargo on any ship. That one is pretty good. I like the mark Marksman's map a little bit better. You can see stuff on islands, so that one can help a little bit more in terms of kind of calculating what your opponent's gold score might be like seeing if they have some kind of crazy UTs that you need to know about that are face down, or of course, just seeing what islands you should go to if you spot a seven on an island you haven't explored, for example. Speaking of exploring, Forged Papers basically gives you the explorer ability. So that one is nice, but it's really not that useful in shorter and smaller games because once you explore, you don't really need this. Um, and a lot of times the ship finding it will already have an explorer aboard, so Forged Papers is only better in Games where you can transfer it or use it on like a hybrid, maybe something like that, save a cargo space. Homemade flag is pretty solid, so cannon ranges are reduced to S against this ship. So that one is a decent defensive UT, not too bad, kind of a cool one. And okay, it does say ships, not forts, but anyway, ROM. ROM is thematically cool, but it, you can't give the ship a turn and act an action to turn after loading ROM. So it slows you down. This gives away to the ROM bomb uh, UT combo where. You purposely let an enemy ship board you and take rum if it's the only thing you've got aboard, and then they'll be dead in the water the next turn. So it can be actually a weirdly offensive strategy called the rum bomb combo. 
plague is really nasty. Eliminate all the crew. She cannot dock when she touches another ship. Uh, unload plague onto that ship. So this one is really nasty. It kills a lot of crew really quickly. And you can give it to an opponent to cause max chaos. Letter of Mark. You can dock at an enemy home island and then be given repair actions while there. And then forts can't fire on the ship unless the ship fires on them first. This one is actually pretty cool. I like to try to combine it with home island raiding or maybe the wine UT, which we'll see soon. So that one I'd like. Buried treasure. This one is pretty boring. It's pretty much like rum. So almost the same thing. Dry powder, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we saw the LE version. So you load it face down, then you can be given a shoot action, two shoot actions in one turn. So that one is solid, but it would work well with the reverse captain ability because then you could shoot, move, shoot, move twice, which is neat. Trees usually doesn't come into play too often. You can repair a ship completely, but it usually doesn't. I've not used it very often, so it can be good when you already know it's there, and then you dock like a gunship at the island to get a free repair, which is nice. Grease barrels is it might have been okay back in the day, but having it face down and then you get a plus L only once is really lame compared to some of the other UTs like Screw Engine where you can be given an entire move action. Um, so you're not limited to just plus L bonus. And then Frond of Saga is basically Grease Barrels times 10 because you get plus LL on a 5 or 6 and you can reuse it or refind it even if you dump it overboard with a low roll. Neptune's figurehead is cool. Ship sinks, dock it fully repaired at its home island. So it's a really powerful one. It's kind of like a super eternal type thing. So, kind of overpowered, if anything, but that being said, it could be cool as like a like a bargaining or trade ship for an opponent, maybe, something like that. Weapons, plus one to boarding rolls for every crew honor. I like this. I think they should have done a little bit more with like crazy boarding bonuses, like plus two, plus three. So this is one I like quite a lot. Um, so, weapons is one I've used a bunch of times, and it can be pretty effective. This is another good one to transfer to a gunship, and then you could get, you know, plus four, plus five to your boarding rolls. Fruit, now this one is unpunched, so haven't really used it, at least not in regular games. It's just really annoying. It takes up two cargo spaces, can't be unloaded, really doesn't have valuable, it really doesn't have value. We already saw scurvy. Scurvy's not even that bad, so this one is just not too exciting. Natives, this one is a really great negative UT, so it, it's almost like a mermaid's uh, unique treasure. So the number of crew is the number of turns the ship can be given actions for. So this is a great, one of the best negative UTs ever released, but also really annoying as a result. I don't like it at all, but it's great for gunship fleets. Cross of Coronado, basically loaded face down, get a free mass repair after your mass is eliminated. So that one's just a really basic, simple defensive UT. Castaway is actually fascinating. I might try to review this someday. It's really amazing. So... You get a point cost three or less from outside the game, which is kind of overpowered. And this that crew assumes this ship's nationality. So you don't have to use, um, don't have to have a crew of the same nationality as the ship you're putting them on. So you could put same action twice Calco Cat on like a Jade Rebellion ship to give them like a free extra SAT crew. So Castaway, I think is a little bit overpowered maybe, but I've only begun to really think about the possibilities of this UT. There's so many great crew for three points or less. You could get Eternal crew. You could put Gus Schultz on like a cursed ship to make it Eternal. So it's really wacky. So really amazing one there. And then you could use this with Chariot of the Gods to put an Eternal crew like that on a sea monster if you wanted to, just as one example. And then we've got... Missionary is another great negative UT like natives remove all the crew from the game. So that one's really another basic Or at least a more basic negative UT really devastating though actually Explosives is pretty fun. So you can use it to blow up enemy ships 50% uh, chance of success. This one. I'd like to use more. It's a little bit over the top because you can Take out a five master with a one master for example, but still a fun UT kind of kind of a really fun one for casual games or maybe multiplayer games where it might see quite a lot of fun action. Neptune Strident is like a big wave attack so it can be pretty devastating but you do have to give the ship a shoot action so you want to get into position first to to be able to use it so you might want to get an extra action so then you could move 
and then give the ship a shoot action to use the trident. So this one is pretty devastating though. And it hits forts as well, which is cool. And 3L long, so a big, a big radius for the wave. Spices is solid, like smuggled goods, double the value um, of one non-unique treasure on the ship when unloaded your home island. So pretty basic positive UT. Usually see it in good gold fleets. Maps of Alexandria, kind of a fun ruiner sometimes. You get to look at all the coins. Both opponents see all coins on islands because it's face up. So this one I find, I don't know, it, it ruins the mystery and surprise element of exploring, but it can really help you determine which islands to hit, but it also helps your opponent. So just keep that in mind. So relics is quite interesting. This one is pretty cool. So if something is going to get eliminated, you may give relics to the attacker instead, ending that ship's turn. So if they're shooting and they take one shot at you and then you give them relics, I mean, it's face up, so you can't really use it as a surprise, but still you could end their turn and then they can't take any more shots. So relics can be really powerful, but then they have it. So it's a nice balance UT since you have to give it to your opponent when you use it. It's not too overpowered because it switches hands. It can lead to a weird stalemate situation if two gunships are facing each other and they just keep trading relics for every time they would they would have hit. So it's kind of weird, but definitely a cool one. Wolves is really good negative UT. So it basically locks up the gold until you kill them with a crew, musketeer, marine. So most good fleets have no use for musketeers and marines. Both of those crew are kind of overpriced. So wolves is, wolves is a good way to just take out an island in most games. So... This is another weird one where Castaway could bring in a Musketeer to take out the Wolves. So Castaway, I think, is one of the most underrated in terms of concepts. And, you know, I think Castaway is a unique case where it hasn't really been discussed a ton. And I think it's a rare game piece where there's a ton more that could be done with it. And we're just scratching the surface of the possibilities. Of course, I'm not aware of, like, you know, there's probably tons of conversations from the old WizKids forum that's gone now from, like, 2005 about what to do with it. But... Still, I think there's a lot of potential there. Wine, as I mentioned earlier, this one is cool. So basically you can trade it for a coin, your opponent's highland, or a fort. So this is actually a rare case where it allows you to dock it in enemy fort. So I like to use it with other UTs like Letter of Mark, or maybe even a homing flag, things like that. Or maybe you have a canceller aboard to try to get out of there intact. So wine is a really fun one. One of my favorite UTs. Overall, Barbary Coast was a pretty solid set for UTs. Rats is a negative one, but not too bad. Can't be unloaded, but you could eliminate it for gold with the Carbon Charlie cannon-making ability. Knights of Malta Banner and the Knights of Barbary Banner are just opposites. So, so if you have a Corsair fleet, Knights of Malta Banner could be a quick, easy 5 gold for you, and then your opponent won't be able to do much with it, most likely. And then the Barbary Banner is worth 5 to non-Corsair fleets. So... Anyway, so Barbary Banner is the more popular one. You often see that in a lot of competitive fleets to add gold to the build total. Because basically, it's a, basically a five coin that doesn't take up space in for, for every non-Corsair faction. White Gunpowder is just a basic negative. You can repair it so you can shoot again. Not too big a deal there. Really kind of a boring negative one. Still a good concept, though. White Gunpowder makes sense. Poseidon's Breath. This one is pretty crazy. So I'll put it face down. I'll uh, reveal it. You can move your base move as many times as she has masts. So, and then you have to eliminate a mast from the ship or whatever. So, this one is crazy because you could do it on a 10 master to move. I guess if you use the Zanfu from Return to Savage Shores, you could move up to 20S because you've got S plus S base move, 10 masts. So, you can move 20S in one turn. Or even a ship like HMS Swallow, you could move S plus L times 5. So, that one is pretty crazy on the right ship. Fireworks is cool. Load face down, you get plus two to kin roll. So, so that's a nice one, like a sudden firepower explosion. That would be great on a 10 master as well. Rotting hull, similar to wet gunpowder, just another basic negative UT. You can repair it to eliminate it. Volcano, I find really boring. I'm glad they did some volcanoes in Savage Shores, because uh, I think this could be way more devastating. You just eliminated a coin. And then a random crew from every ship docked the island, but which was probably only going to be one in most games. So. I actually made a Ring of Fire set of islands and a UT that are a lot more interesting and devastating, more realistic for, you know, big volcanic eruptions. So Karmic Idol is a fun ruiner. So remove all face-up UTs from the game. So 
that's just yeah, so that would knock out a ton of these UTs, at least the ones that are faced up, which are most of them. So just a fun ruiner, really. It is kind of a, a solid defensive, um, kind of like an insurance policy in case your opponent brings Nemo's plans or something, or just devastating face-up UTs in general, like Neptune's figurehead, Neptune's trident. Um, this can knock those out. So it's kind of, it's a fun ruiner, but you can kind of knock out some crazy shenanigans if you're not in the mood for that. So Bad Maps is amazing. So this one I find incredibly interesting. So basically, um, opponent to your left moved the island. Bad Maps was on two L in any direction. So that could be, that could totally change the setup of the game and put, you know, a wild island right next to somebody's home island or... You could have forts shooting at each other. It's just crazy. So, kind of like Castaway, I think there's a lot of untapped possibility there. Albatross is just a really annoying negative one. So, you get negative one to T6 rolls, and then it can your opponent can move it to other ships on a roll of six. So, it basically flies. It's a bird that flies around your fleet. So, it's really annoying. So, trade route doesn't really matter much. I don't know. You could use it as an arbitrage strategy. If you know that you have a one coin, your opponent has a seven, you can, and then you can trade them. But in most games, and it's supposed to be random, so you're not even supposed to be able to do that for the most part. If you've got multiple coins, um, if you've spied it an enemy treasure on your home, opponent's home island, if they have more than one, it's supposed, still supposed to be random, which is dumb. But anyway, so trade route, not usually valuable, very niche, and it's loaded, it's loaded face down, so you don't want to waste of cargo space on it either so not a, not a good one for the most part pension basically got an upgrade in pirates of the caribbean set as we'll see soon and then pandora's box is crazy we just found this one in vassal campaign game four so each player must choose and put a unique treasure from outside the game aboard this ship so this one is just crazy so you could use it to sabotage an enemy ship or to try to get in an opponent's good graces by putting something positive on it so just one of the craziest like game pieces ever, honestly. Uh, Martyr's Amulet is just an anti-cursed savior device. Not too big a deal. Monkey's Paw basically is a negative one. It means you're guaranteed to get hit when an opponent shoots. Only one, one cannon though, so not a huge deal. Just another negative one. Witch's Brew. This one is okay, but you have to give up your action to use it. So it's usually better just to use Smoke Pot Shot or Smoke Pot Specialist. But those are three points, so it's a good way to get it for free if you really want to use that. Maps of Hades is a pretty cool negative one. So before giving an action on a 5 or 6, your opponent to your right gives the ship a, an action instead, or move action. So Maps of Hades is a cool one. Overall, a negative one I like using. Good for mind control, which is one of my favorite fleet strategies. Holy Water, it's kind of complicated. Really basic ability text, but it's really hard to determine what an enemy ability is versus actions versus you know choices. So Wolf did a, a bit of a write-up on it, um, but it's still that one is just tough to use, and we'll see a clone eventually. Sunken treasure, basically roll two d6, and then it's worth the combined value, but it decreases by one each turn, and it also takes up two cargo. So this one I don't like using actually. I don't think it's really worth it. And you can easily roll really low, which would be bad. The Eye of Insanity. This one is pretty cool. So you can choose a target crew on the ship. And then it can basically copy a cursed crew in play. This one is wacky because you can use it to copy a version of Davy Jones. So you can basically turn an oarsman into like an all-powerful Davy Jones. As long as the original is still around. So that one is actually quite fascinating. And I like... I like to think about the possibilities there. Really, really open-ended UT. Cursed Conch is also cool. So sacrifice an action to give any sea monster in play an extra action. Or an action, I should say. Even if it's not part of your fleet. So that one is quite powerful and interesting. Not a, not a ton of games will have sea monsters, especially competitive games. But still a cool one. Red Skull doesn't really do much. If there's a cursed player in play, it doesn't give them the ship. Uh, just turns the nationality to cursed, so not a huge deal really. Uh, doesn't affect things too much. Bad plans is really boring. Subtract one from MI results. Not a not a big negative one really. Nemo's charts is more interesting. So you add two. Nemo's charts is a staple of mysterious island farming, where you try to get 
high rolls at Mysterious Islands to get the positive effects, which are numerous. I use this in my Mind Control Fleet as well. This one is pretty cool, actually, but it kind of leads to some overpowered stuff happening sometimes. Enemy of the State is a pretty staple, pretty good staple negative here. So gain the Mercenary Keyword, which means you can't dock your home island. So that one is a nice negative to slow down enemy gold runners. And then Luddite's Revenge makes the cannons worse. And then you have to you have to uh, succeed at a shoot action um, by hitting to remove it. Not a big deal. Metal Hull is a really cool one, actually. So base move becomes S, and then you have to roll a 6 to hit the ship. And then if you do, remove Metal Hull. So it almost turns any ship into like a mini a Corazado type thing. So all of a sudden you're slow, but then super hard to hit. So something like El Corazado is a great ship to transfer this to because then your base move is already S and then you're even harder to hit. So this is a great defensive one for gun for slow dreadnought gunships if you can get it on one of those. Mines, it's okay. So this one, I think you eliminate a mast from the ship that comes with an S of it. Maybe a crew too, but just kind of a basic positive. UT, power cans is cool. Range of the cannons becomes 2L, but then it only works through one hit or one successful shoot action. So you can combine this with other range doublers though to get like 4L range. I think the max is 8L, but you need, I don't know, you need like the Eye of Maru T. I don't know, it's kind of wacky. So 4L is a more realistic way to do it if you can get on the Atlanta or El Neptuno, something like that. Periscope, I used to think a lot, I liked. I used to think highly of this one, but it's you cancel an enemy crew's ability for, um, I think it's just the turn that it's uh, that it's used on. So it's not for their turn as well. So Periscope is actually not as good as I used to think it was. So it's too good to keep in mind. It's not as good as just canceling. So Screw Engine, which I mentioned earlier, get two move actions. So that one's kind of a staple of positive, uh, like fast uh, treasure running fleets. So... Banshee's Cry can move 4L, for example, get home really fast. Targeting Scope guarantees you a hit, kind of like a positive version of the mon Monkey's Paw, pretty basic. The Gem of Hades is just a clone of the Red Skull. Runes of Speed, one of the rune combos. Most of these are not very good, or runes of tease, I should say. Most of them are loaded face down and aren't that great. So, so Runes of Speed basically gives you two move actions like Screw Engine, but you can't use the ship's or crew abilities, so you can't use Helmsman with it, so not a, not as good as Screw Engine. Runes of Defense is a lot like um, Cross of Coronado, almost the same thing there. Runes of Destruction, you can eliminate an iceberg. This could be cool, especially with like a big custom like cluster iceberg that's really large, taking up a lot of space, or maybe near your home island that's been a pest or a nuisance for you. You could also use this to eliminate the Runes of Odin iceberg, which I'll talk about soon. And that one's a great one to use with Runes of Magic, because you move an Iceberg L in any direction. And I'm going to skip to the Odin one real quick. This one is one of the more interesting in the game. Hold this treasure face down, and then you place an Iceberg from outside the game. Um, not with an L of an island. And then it says if this Iceberg touches an enemy ship, remove that ship and all her crew from play. So, so it's really devastating. This is often attempted to be combined with Runes of Magic. To basically flip them on the same turn to you basically have your choice to eliminate any ship from play automatically which is really overpowered but you need both so it's tough to get both UTs to do it so you could take out a 10 master the English use this in Century of the Empires in 2013 to eliminate El Corzado in like 42 points from the game but yeah like I said if you have the runes of destruction um, I guess you could play that as basically a cancel on the runes of Odin all right, so Ruins of Wealth is really annoying. This one is just really, I don't get it at all. You have to basically you get to re-roll to replace values of um, of treasure on the ship, but you might roll a one, so I don't think it's a good one at all. It won't necessarily make you wealthy. Uh, Ruins of Loki basically force a d6 roll of one, so that's good to foil an opponent's roll of six on all-powerful or something like that. So... And of course, the opposite, Runes of Thor, it guarantees you a six roll. So you could guarantee a six roll on like Lost, for example, which we'll see soon to place like six reefs or something in one turn, for example. Tons of good uses for both of these. Uh, Nemo's Plans, which I don't have, 
it allows you to reuse UTs that would otherwise be eliminated. So that's these are often combined with Nemo's plans, or at least conceptually, it's hard to pull off. Odin's Revenge is kind of famous. Uh, eliminate a mass from every ship in play. So this is a good this is a good one to ensure against an opponent using tons of fast little gold runners. It's, it's devastating against swarm fleets. It's a good way to counter the Banshee's Cry, Bone Marine, you know, Mermaid, some of the best uh, cheap one masted gold runners in the game. Message in a bottle is actually kind of interesting. You have to dock the ship at the wild land with the fewest treasure coins, and then it, there's a tie your opponent chooses. So this one can teleport you far away from where you originally were. So that one I kind of I find kind of interesting. Still got to use it more. This one just gives you the the ability to shoot at submerged ships with an S. So usually it's a five point ability, which is too much, but still you save points if you can find that and it becomes relevant. Driftwood is boring. You just uh, save a crew basically but you put them on a wild island, so crew protect is way better. And of course, claw cannon is just kind of a weird way to board. I'd rather have S-board or switchblade or, or just board normally through ramming. So homing beacon is pretty good for gold running fleets. So if you can draw a straight line from the ship's bow to your home island, you can dock right away. You don't have to even move at all. So this one is solid, of course. Uh, less good in games with terrain or closely packed, uh, densely packed setups. But it's also cool in Round Earth because you can try to figure out whether or not you can draw a straight line through Round Earth, which gets kind of complicated and a little bit gamey, maybe. Curse of Davy Jones, basically um, minus one at kin rolls. So, or plus one for like cursed type stuff. So, not cursed faction, but sea creatures for the most part, or most sea creatures. So, so it's good for the cursed and. Maybe the pirates a bit because they have the second most number of sea creatures. But anyway, protection from Davy Jones. This is one I love. Use this one a lot. So basically, uh, you can just go through whirlpools without getting damaged. So that's a solid one for teleporting and using whirlpool strategy like Calypso, things like that. Triton's Defense. This is similar to Livestock. Just really dumb anti-sea monster uh, UT that's not worth using. <laughs> Lost is crazy and overpowered. So... You're supposed to place it, place terrain as away from a wild islander ship, but or from I should say an islander terrain, but um, but you can place it under ships, which is really overpowered. So you could put this under a one master, a Sargasso Sea, to probably like get that ship stuck for a while. You could put a reef under a ten master and guarantee that the ship loses at least four masts, if not you know nine, all at once on one roll. So. Loss is really overpowered. You can also use it to place whirlpools to totally change the game completely. Um, or get trade currents down to make your fleet way faster all of a sudden. Uh, whirlpool is fun, so you got to force the ship into the whirlpool. So that one can be pretty amusing. Uh, another teleportation type one. Jack's Piece of Eight is basically the doctor ability. So another way to save points if you find it. Uh, D.B. Jones Heart is that clone of Holy Water that I already talked about. So kind of complicated, but solid positive one. Jack's Compass is actually the same as Homing Beacon. So we saw some clones in the Caribbean set and we'll see more soon. This one is a little bit interesting. Swap D.B. Jones Key with one phase down treasure on any other wild island. So you could use that to maybe get a, get a seven or get a positive UT in return if you get lucky. Kind of like island treasure trading, but Pirate Globe is just a clone of uh, Maps of Alexandria. Dead Man's Chest. This one is the upgraded version of Pension from South China Seas that I saw we saw earlier. So this one, instead of relying on the same ship that the UT is on, you can eliminate any number of crew in your whole fleet. So there's a crazy funny gimmick fleet with like 16 oarsmen or something like that in a 40 point fleet that Lord Stu made. So if you find this and then use this, it's like an automatic win if you find this and unload it. Um, for 16 gold for like an automatic win it's really silly but it's pretty funny and it, it's actually a decent fleet it can actually win games um gun is just another clone of uh weapons sword is just the basic plus one so not as good but still nice aztec medallion just roll a one if you get or roll a d6 if you get a one all the gold is gone but you know not gonna affect things too much usually spyglass it's a that's another clone from Spanish Main, Letter of Mark. This one doesn't have the uh, the little thing about forts can't shoot at the ship unless the ship fires on them first. 
So the Crimson Coast ver version is a little bit better. Other than that, a clone. Rum is just a basic clone. Potions and brews I like a lot. Wrote a review about this one too. I'll try to remember to put links in the description below to my reviewed UTs. Uh, so this one, you force an opponent to reroll a die. Not quite as good as Runes of Loki, but pretty interesting. Cotton's Parrot is basically filching gold. So save points there. Cannibals is just a basic, uh, pretty mild um, negative UT. Plunder is same as rum and buried treasure. Smuggled goods is um, a lot like spices, but it says lowest gold value rather than any of them. Gold, uh, voodoo doll is kind of interesting. So choose the non-cursed enemy crew and roll a d6. And it's like on a five or six, you like turn the face crew the face down. So it can be like a non-cursed canceler in a way if you get lucky. So voodoo doll is okay. Barrel of monkeys is really obnoxious. So this one, it's kind of funny, but this one, after she leaves the wild island, uh, choose a treasure, and then you can pass off treasure to other ships too, I think. Blood money is just awful. Should never have been pr produced. Cursed natives, not quite as bad. Same thing, pretty much. <clears throat> turtles, this one is cool. Wolf has this designed this one. I'm trying to collect 10 turtles, of course. I've only got three, I think, so far, because one's in my regular UT bag. So this one you get 10 turtles and then they move S towards your home island and then they're, each one that gets to your home island is worth one gold. So changes how much gold is in the treasure distribution by a lot. You know, it could go from 30 to 40 in a standard game. And then, you know, it's sometimes it's a hectic race to see if you can eliminate turtles or not. Because if you ram them, they, they die. So Mirror of Archimedes, this one is just too wordy and too complicated. I don't think it was executed well, but and it's really not that good either. French Royal Decree, uh, each time the ship sinks a non-French ship, you're going to choose some gold coin on a wild island, and then you place it on your home island. That could get awkward if you put trees or like, I don't know, like wolves. You could transfer wolves to your home island, which is bizarre. Um, so there's some weird interactions with other UTs with this. Uh, and then there's an English version as well. So kind of like a bounty hunting type uh, scenario there with those UTs. Deck cannon, it's like a free 2S cannon. So even better than a musketeer because it's free, a little bit better rank. So that's a good positive one. Ammunition, same thing. When revealed, or I mean positive offensive UT is why I said the same thing. So get a free shot equipment. Still takes up cargo space and counts against the point limit of the ship, but you get a free exploding shot. So pretty cool if you've got room for it. And this is another good one to transfer to a gunship. So ammunition is one I like using quite a bunch. Front of Saga, I mentioned this one earlier. So Get plus LL to your move on a 5 or 6. 3, 4, nothing happens. And then on a 1 or 2, you have to place it on the nearest wild island. So it could be easy to pretty pretty much pick it back up again right after you lose it and then try to use it again. So if you could stack this with like Runes of Thor and maybe even Nemo's plans or just get lucky in general or have a reroller, you can make a ship really fast. This thing on a 10 master or a gunship that's devastating could be just absolutely game-breaking. For the most part, you might already have S plus L speed or or faster, and then plus LL on you know a lot of turns in a row could be. I mean that especially with C Action twice. I think Front of Saga is underrated for how game breaking it can be. This one I love. So you eliminate um, friendly trade currents. All islands become unexplored to you, and then you place it. You can choose any wild island and place it on that island, so it stays in play, which I like a lot. This is basically an anti navigator, anti trade current. UT, which is why I love it, because those are a bit overpowered. Navigators are underpriced, and in campaign games especially, this one is almost necessary just to keep the ocean clean, um, so you don't have trade currents everywhere that clutter things up and uh, add uh, game file size to the vassal file. But anyway, this one is quite interesting. The Heart of Stone, mentioned in Wraith's uh, flavor text, and basically you choose a crew, and then... So it's link if you basically link it to a crew and then if either is eliminated, uh, you eliminate the UT. So, and then you get the eternal and fear keywords. That's basically what it says on the back. So, so it's a cool way to get a couple okay abilities for free. Eternal is pretty solid. Fear just kind of random, but it's a it's a nice positive UT overall. Kind of a neat concept. This one is up there in the top three or top five most overpowered UTs in the game. So Ultra of the Loa. 
So you keep it on the wild island, and then wild dock to this island. You may, and then it says like you may eliminate uh, two crew from ships dock the island. I think. Let me just make sure I get it right, just to just to peek at it real quick. So eliminate two crew. It doesn't even say where they have to come from. Um, if you do on the next player's turn, you may choose to give action to his or her sh ships, or choose that he or she gets no actions at all. So as long as you have two crew, you can just skip your opponent's whole turn and then just go again and then with that turn you could get two more crew ready either at the island or whatever and then sack them skip their turn again so this is one where if you get it to work right and you can start chaining it together you can basically just win outright it's it's ridiculous and it was it's clear that this one was not play tested probably at all and ultra Veloa, you could make a solid case that this is the most broken ut ever created um so, just absolutely bonkers. Necklace of the Sky. Loads treasure face down. This one is really interesting, actually. So you can dock it. So it's loaded face down, so it takes up a cargo space. But then you can use it as a surprise tactic. Dock it at any wild island to play. And then for that rest of the rest of the game, uh, no ship in your fleet can load this treasure. So you can only use it once per game, essentially. But it's still worth it, because you can use this as a surprise you could use this with home island raiders if you had a wild island near your opponent's home island and then just zip over to your opponent's home island right after you teleport. Or, like the English used it um, with the Dreadnought in Vassal Campaign Game 1 against the Curse, you can teleport right near an opponent's you know operations with a lot of ships there, put a big gunship right in the middle of things all of a sudden and just blast away. The Curse did that in uh, Command of the Oceans as well last year in 2017. So Necklace of the Sky is a pretty cool teleportation one. So that wraps up Collection Review Series number 22. You can check links in the description below. I'll try to include links to my reviews. And then you can also check out to see if there's any UTs on eBay. Rain Tiger has some um, as well, I'm sure. So check out the links down there. And then question of the day would be, what's your favorite UT in the whole game? And what do you think is the most powerful uh, UT in the game? Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more.